Is this app going to be every digital display calendar in the market? Yes. Yes, I think it will. Welcome to Restless Tech. Today I will be reviewing a unique dashboard digital display app that can be added to almost any screen on your home. It's called Mango Display. Mango Display is an app that allows you to fully customize any display, whether it's your TV screen, to an old phone, or even a plain monitor with the help of a fire stick. We will be talking about the uses and the functionality of how it all works. And I have been personally searching for a way to use this 55 inch Android screen as a command center for my home. Will this tool help make that happen? Let's find out. So how does it work? Now, I am no developer and I have no proven information that this is exactly how it works. But as a technology lover, I can only put in my assumptions. From what I can see, Mango Display is a web application, kind of similar to Netflix, Google Calendar, and other web applications. Mango Display is a web application that streams your personalized dashboard to any display of your choosing. Using the editor, once you log into their website, you can see a canvas that allows you to add widgets like calendar, clocks, weather, notes, to-do lists, and even fun moving images like GIFs. Or if you'd like to upgrade to a business version, there's even more features that I have not mentioned. Since I'm assuming that it works like any other streaming service does, that alone can make this app a very powerful tool to add anything you want on any screen. You can technically customize your screen on the same display, but to make it a little easier, it's best to use two devices for the setup. One is going to be for editing on and customizing, and the other can be your live preview. For you download your app or use a web browser. In my example, I chose to download the Mango Display Mirror app from the Google Play Store. I will be using my Samsung Galaxy Tablet S8 Plus, and this is just to help me to decorate on the go to set up for the real star of my kitchen, the Android 55 inch. Upon installing the app on the digital display device, it is pretty simple and straightforward. You just go to the Google Play Store and you search for Mango Display, install the app, once you have added the app to your display device or log in via browser, you will be prompted to name your device and be provided with a display code to set up the new custom screen. You will be prompted to name your device and choose the type of display you will be using. After selecting your choice, it will take you to the canvas screen where you can fully customize how you want your display to look. A very useful feature that would be helpful to know right from the start is the template saving feature. Now, I personally cannot sit in front of the display screen that I will be decorating for all day. And I noticed that that's where the template saving feature comes in handy. This allows you to decorate your page as you go and save it to reuse on another display of your choice in the future. There is also a preview feature that you can click in the settings menu on the top right. And this made my customization experience a breeze. But you got to remember, it's only a preview. So testing interactions such as adding events into the calendar and marking off your to-do list won't work in the preview. Please set up your desired widgets, play with their settings found using the edit icon on the top right, and resize them to fit however you want on the board with just a click drag or a slide of your finger. Same goes for the pages. You can add more pages, delete pages, rearrange them in the order that you want them to be, or even turn on the option to have the display showcase each page like a slideshow with transition effects as well. The widgets. Each widget, I noticed, has some settings and formats according to what they specialize in. The calendar widget. I gotta say that when it comes to some widgets, not all of their settings are very self-explained. I do gotta say that when it comes to some widgets, these you have assigned them in. Accomplishing all the steps provided by the website, it took me a good while and even having to ask Facebook group for some help to achieve this. Calendar. To use a third-party calendar to synchronize into your calendar widget, you can click on the settings option and it will give you three different types of calendars. Google Calendar, Microsoft Outlook, Apple Calendar, any URL or file types like iCal and ICS. Going into the settings, this is where you can customize it to your liking and it will give you many options like the calendar type where you can see your calendar in a view of a list. As for the calendar images, even after following the tutorial on the website and asking for a little bit of help on the Facebook group, I did do all the steps that it took.
but it still wasn't working for me. In the end, I found out that there was a bug preventing me from seeing my calendar images. When I customized my calendar screen, I had only selected a few of the categories and enabled the photo pictures within them. Then I moved on to the rest of the settings and saved it, and it did not work. So in order to make it work, you have to turn on all of the photo settings in every category, save it, and then you can go back and unselect the ones you don't want to see. The clock widget is a very useful feature for me and my family. Currently, the only other ways to tell time in my kitchen is through Alexa's speaker screen connected right by the trash can on the counter. So on the hectic days where the garbage gets full and I don't have time to take it out and, and then there's trash sitting right on the counter in front of the clock, I struggle to tell what time it is. This being able to have it on my display eliminates that tiny struggle that I have in some mornings. I only wish that they had an option to turn off the day of text, just like they do give an option to turn off the greetings messages. The quotes widget is a good splash of something new and different once in a while, letting you choose the category you want from Bible verses to love and success. It's nice to read some wise words from those who exceed in life. I personally use the inspiration category, but you can choose multiple. Now, I am not one to like seeing bad news all the time, so I don't have this one on my screen. But I did take a peek at the settings menu, and it gives you plenty of choices from many news sources. The weather is clean and gives the options to see the location that you entered, with an option for today's weather, 24-hour forecast, and five-day weather forecast. You could also choose the Fahrenheit or Celsius. The image widget is straightforward. Upon editing, you have the option to select sample images provided by Mango Display itself, or use a third-party image service like Unsplash and select the categories from there. Sign into your Google Photos, Apple Photos, URL link, and of course, the ability to just upload files yourself. This is fun when adding family photos so you can make it like a slideshow or just add photos of previous or upcoming events. I was kind of hoping for more optional designs for this widget, such as adding images, GIF stickers, or a background image. I did input a vacation that I will be having next year in the countdown. And I gotta say, it does make things a little more exciting. For the to-do widget, you are required to have a Todoist account, Microsoft to-do account, or a Google Tasks account. And I'm pretty sure they're all free to create. The tasks show up as a list. Though if you do have parent tasks that contain subtasks, it will spread out the list entirely and in no specific order. If the widget is too big, it will slightly be aligned to the left. From what I can see in the format menu, there's no way to center align the list in the middle of the widget. So a way to avoid this is you can make the widget smaller and just move it wherever you like it. The only option they give you is to use the Todoist app. With the additional option in the settings to automatically close reoccurring tasks at the end of the day, it can be very useful for chores because those are tasks that reoccur often. And it seems like Mango Display likes to collaborate with Todoist quite a bit. You are required to set up a Mango Chores project within your Todoist app. And to divide the chores per user, you have to add a label per user as to who the chores are assigned to. Within the Todoist app, you can choose the color label that you want for that person, and it will appear in the Mango Display. Notes. As for the notes section, it's very basic, and I wish there was an improvement for this one. The settings is where you can add your text, and it comes with very little formatting options like bolding, italicizing, alignment, bullet points, and numbers. One big downside that I didn't like about this widget is that you cannot edit this on your touchscreen device. Being able to edit right there and then would make things 100% easier and faster so that your family can communicate with each other and put up little reminder notes and snippets of what you need. At the very least, since Mango Display likes collaborating so much, why not collaborate with Google Keep? Google Keep also has a collaboration option to edit notes with other shared users, and it would be perfect for this situation. Even upon editing a note that you've already wrote, if any alignment was messed with it, or even attempting to erase all the text and adding it back, the widget shows the format in a completely different way. <laughs> that is all for the widgets, since I only have the Pro version. 
So that is all for the widgets. And since I only have the pro version of the subscription, I cannot give an in-depth review of the extra features that are added in the business plan. Moving along to the pros and cons. For pros, you can use this on any given screen, including old outdated phones, tablets, TVs, or monitors, as long as you provide a small component like a fire stick. This helps for many of us who do feel guilty for hoarding our outdated electronics that are just sitting there collecting dust but you probably feel too guilty to toss because it still works. Any screen with a web browser will do. Although, if you want to use all the features, you would need a touch screen. So that means you don't need to upgrade the display device in the future. Because we all know technology gets outdated in just a few short years, having just a simple web app stream the personalized display contents onto your screen from almost any device with an internet connection is pretty neat. It has great potential and the developers are still going. Although there's no exact official release date that I could find, I took the time to look up the application information on Google Play Store and find the release date. It mentions that it was released on September 14th, 2018. 2018, that makes this about six years old. And as for this app still pushing updates, as for the time of this video being released, it's already a good sign that the developers take this app seriously. And with the subscription plans helping to contribute, I don't think they plan to drop this project in the future. Another pro is that this app has a supportive and growing Facebook community. Although Mango Display owners don't seem to be active in the group as much, there are plenty who are. And are this tool can really help you if you have a very busy family schedule and keep updating it constantly with the ability to collaborate on calendars with other users and have it pop up on the screen moments later, it really does make things more efficient. Moving on to the cons. The notes widget needs a major improvement. On the days where images are attached to the calendar event, like this example right here, it would be great to be able to see the event title over or slightly above the image on that same day, especially the time that the event starts. Another small con I wanted to add was the option to flip or mirror the images or GIF images would be kind of helpful when it comes to designing, but I don't know if that's just my pickiness. The text colors for the event don't have contrast against the colors of the labels. Another con that I didn't like is the text colors of the all day events don't have contrast against the colors of the labels. Albeit the label colors are provided only in Google Calendar and there is a limited list with not many dark colors. If Mango Display had the option to change the text color from all day events and the timed event separately, then it can fix this issue. In conclusion, that was my review for the Mango Display application. I personally still prefer to use a PDF annotator for many reasons, though I do like the Google Calendar Sync ability and the fun GIF images to help decorate your page and make it more lively. If you are interested in seeing a comparison video of an annotator app like Notewise that I used versus Mango Display, I would be glad to make a video. If you are interested in seeing a comparison video of how I use an annotator app called Notewise and comparing it to Mango Display, then please comment below and let me know. Other than that, would you like to use this app in your home? This was Restless Tech, and remember, your tech can wait, but life won't. I'll see you next time.